Hello everyone, I hope you all are doing great and welcome to yet another recorded lecture of uh, MCOM 202, which is uh, news sub editing. So uh, previously when we were having face to face classes, we were at the week number nine and this is week number 10. And today we are going to talk about uh, how to edit uh, text based publications uh, and how to edit stories for text. So I hope you all can see uh, this PowerPoint slide on my uh, desktop and it is showing on your desktops as well. So let's start. So, uh, so we are going to learn about the popularity of text online. Headlines are more vital than ever. That's what we are going to learn in online um, uh, editing. Um, I'll summarize the web editing and online newspaper from threat to ally and avoid the temptation of shovelware. Identifying unique selling points of your web uh, pages or websites. So uh, Pointer Institute actually concluded with Stanford University on how people read new sites on web. So we have discussed um, our research before. I track research, you probably remember that research. So key findings was uh, to our all surprise that web is a different medium compared to the print. Obviously it is because it involves light, it involves visuals, it involves a lot of uh, elements. So rules and conventions about user behavior that applies in the print do not apply online. So a professor of communication at Stanford in San Francisco, Marion Livingston, uh, have been videotaping readers of web pages since 1996. So noting how they read these web pages. So in 1998, she and the Pointer Institute for Media Studies used an eye track device to get more information. So you already know the eye track research. So researchers mounted tiny cameras on readers' head to track where on a computer screen, the subject's eyes stop to absorb information. So that tells us what our subjects read. So we also could track movement from site to site or web pages to web pages. So 67 people in the study looked at only news sites. So they surfed to 211 unique news sites and looked at almost 6,000 pages over 40 hours. That's a huge number. So the total number of eye fixations during these sessions was just over 608,000 fixations. So the average time spent at each surfing session was 34 minutes. So during the, uh, that time, the people average visits uh, to six news sites, which suggested people spend very little time at each site. Uh, <clears throat> So it, it brings us to the conclusion that people do not stay longer on the web because they have a lot of distractions as well. So, um, so this reality uh, should influence design policy as well. So in our, in our lectures and in this book where, where, where you are getting these handouts, so uh, Garcia says that news designers should assume the typical web surfer will spend about 20 seconds on a page before deciding to um, go elsewhere or click on a hyperlink. So I will upload this video as well. Uh, we can look at that video that how eye track research works. So um, one major discovery was the subject's preference for the text. So the researchers considered where people's eye went when the first screen of online news appeared. So to text most likely, not to the photographs or graphics as you might expect. So this is a new thing for us. So instead briefs or captions get eye fixations first, but and large apparently online readers, I then return to the photographs and graphics, but sometimes not until they have returned to the first page after clicking away to the full article. So commentator Steve Outing writing about the research results noted that when researchers analyzed people's fixations on home pages, they noted that people looked for headlines news briefs and captions instead of pictures and graphs. So it was quite opposite compared to the newspapers or the print medium. So, uh, so they looked at the photos afterward 
and sometimes not until they had gone to another page and then returned to the home page. Up till now, we just knew that people look a lot of pictures and visuals and graphics and, and visualization on internet, but this is a new thing for us. So then they should fixate on a photo on the page, he said. So he also pointed out that the subject surface, the web, on a high bandwidth connection, which brought photos on screen quickly. So on slow modems or, or on slow internet connections, text appear before photographs, which further highlights the importance of good text. <clears throat> so one thing we need to understand that people who read newspapers or who read news articles uh, on website, they appreciate content differently compared to, uh, compared to the print medium. So the researchers concluded that this is the essential point that an online provider's first chance to engage the reader is through text. So furthermore, the researchers said, um, the Stanford and Pointer's eye tracking study show a pattern in which text is sought out and either skimmed or read. So these results confirm that people appreciate content differently on websites compared to the print because of the importance and influence of the text. So we'll further look uh, into the role of text first. So if we talk about text is more important online, then headlines are more vital than ever. All right. So headlines must be clear and simple, as said by the Jacob Nelson, uh, who's the web designer and commentator. He said basically that headlines becomes more vital when they appear on an online uh, platform. So um, then uh, the Pointer and Stanford research confirm the findings from his various studies of online design that user preferred state forward headlines rather than cute or funny ones. So online readers are not impressed with puns and other literary work of art. So uh, they want information because they have a lot of stuff on internet to serve or to look into, and they have ample choices. So they, they, they are not going to spend a lot of time on your web page. So bring them directly to the information. So how you'll bring them? Because you are going to write clear and concise headlines. A tabloid lifestyle. So he also said a surfer's most common behavior is to hunt for information. Once people have found what they seek, they dive in more deeply. So for Nelson, web content must, must, must support both aspects of information access and foraging and deep consumption. So he also suggests that news websites should consider hiring editors with tabloid experience. Of course, that doesn't mean hiring editors who will um, concord Elvis is living on Mars stories like that. But someone who has worked for the New York Post might have a better grasp at how to grab web users' attention than someone who has worked at the New York Times because they are trained in a way to, like, to write clear and catchy headlines. So web writing needs to be simplified. So he says that headlines must be written differently uh, for the web than for old medium. So the writing needs to be simple. He says it must tell users what's at the other end of the link with no guesswork required. And it should also avoid sending people on irrelevant chases. So um, no teasers. Uh, they may work once or twice to drive up traffic, but in the longer run, uh, they will make users abandon the site and reduce its credibility. So. Um, Garcia maintains that at this point in web's evolution, words in writing are more important than images. What he says, these are very clear words in the quotation marks, I believe that words are what are going to grab you. Words will bring you back. He says, this is ironic, given that the web is a visual medium. Yes, this is quite ironic because we believe that web is a visual medium and web is a medium of pictures or pictorial descriptions. But research proves that text is more important on website rather than pictures or graphical representations. So um, 
editing uh, for the web can be summarized, write effective and simple headlines, use short summaries and paragraphs, write tightly and simply. And think globally because uh, when you are editing a newspaper that was in printed form, uh, probably uh, you are writing for several hundred thousand people or several thousand people. But when you are writing for the website, you should think globally because your websites or your news sites or your web page could be accessed by the people who are living in a different time zone or in a different uh, region of the world. So um, package material into smaller chunks. Rather than transfer heads from the print editions, work hard on making them simple and easy to understand. For online heads, provide puns, metaphors, and local references. Remember, you are writing for a global audience, many of whom have English as a second language, so simplicity adds clarity. Use lowercase as much as possible because too many capitals break up the reading flow. Avoid visual horrors where the final word of a headline drops on uh, to the text line if it is transferred from the print editions. Idly keep heads to one line. Use short summaries and paragraphs because text is difficult to read on screen and because many readers merely browse Browse online material aimed to summarize stories in a couple of sentences rather than provide all the story. Uh, provide a hypertext link to the full version. Set up each file so it is possible to have a print-only version of each story as well to cater for the many people who prefer to read their news on the paper. If you run a story for longer than two or three sentences, break the story into paragraphs. A good general rule is no more than five or six lines per block of the text. Apply the basic editing principles such as active voice and powerful verbs. That remains the same for web editing as well. Aim to get your message across as simply as possible. Um, this necessitates uh, a return to the good old... So um, I'm sorry for... The interruption there was an internet problem uh, at my place so let's continue <clears throat> where we left so um write uh, tightly and simply so <clears throat> and think globally uh, because add it with international readers in your mind remember that websites have global audiences so readers in australia will know uh, what an embo is or what it means when someone is on compo, because what about people outside the country? Because the terms you are going to use uh, probably in London, that will be difficult for the people living in Canberra or Brisbane to understand. So similarly, the word pest mean angry to an American, but to an English person, it means something very different. So New Zealanders go on holidays to their batch, but the word means something else in other countries. So a South African has a try to welcome people to their country, but few outside uh, that nation know um, what the word means. So it is a, it has a different connotations. So package material into smaller chunks. Think of a way to package material into a smaller pieces. One way to make anything digestible is to break into chunks or mouthfuls. Uh, with online text, break a long list of items into bullet points or divide material into columns or use color or separate text. Make more use of bold to highlight keywords. So when presenting material online, keep it as simple and digestible as possible. So English tablet newspapers provide a useful model for simplifying text material. So that's it for today's class. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll meet in next class. Till then, take care of yourself. Allah Hafiz.